Hello, everyone. I hope you guys are here. Okay. Uh, you can see the result on the screen. See, uh, results are not that correct. Okay, sometimes it doesn't give you correct result. But you can see it is nearly correct. For Mumbai, it is 1% slower. Obviously, if I'm uploading the data within the same region, direct upload will always be better. Okay, but in Sydney, I get it this much fast. In Ohio, this is correct, quite correct. Uh, this is incorrect. Okay, just refresh it. Sometimes it gives you, because of some cache or something, it gives you incorrect result. Okay, if you feel like data is not looking correct, then just refresh it. Okay, mostly if you are, uh, like I'm in Mumbai, okay, if you are in India, you will get, you know, either slower or one or two percent better performance for Mumbai. And for rest of the out of the uh, out of India uh, regions, you will get better performance. If you are in US, you will get better performance for Mumbai or you will get bad performance for US region. Right. I hope that is clear. So this is called as transfer acceleration. Okay. Any question on this? Is this clear? Right now, S3 is going on sale. Right. Now, um, one more part about your S3 that you need to understand is encryption part. Okay, so we saw network security, we saw replication, we saw many different things. One important part about your S3 is the encryption. Because we are talking about a service that is dedicated for storage. Okay, we are talking about service which is dedicatedly there for storage. And when we are talking about storage, the most important part of any storage is the ability to encrypt the data. Okay, so we here we need to encrypt the data and that's what we are going to do. So let me put it here. So you can see, when you create the bucket, Here, while creating the bucket, you can see server side encryption. Okay, this option is there and you can set this option, right? Server side encryption. Now, what does this operation, uh, you know, this operation basically means a server side encryption. What, what does it exactly mean? Let me tell you, see, there are two types of encryption when it comes to S3 or any uh, storage service. There are two types of encryption that are there. The first type we have here is client side encryption. Okay. There is a client side encryption. Then we have is, then, then the uh, next encryption we have is server side encryption. These are the two encryptions we have. Right. So what happened here is that with server side encryption, it simply means that when a client or let's say you are uploading data from your system, from your local machine, you are uploading data to the AWS cloud or to the S3 bucket. Okay, so let's say this is your AWS cloud. In this AWS cloud, you have, let's say, S3 bucket. Okay, this is your S3 bucket. You are uploading data in this bucket. Okay, and you have a key as well. Okay, you have a key as well. To encrypt the data. For encryption, it requires the key. Okay, but uh, let's ignore this right now. So this is your S3 bucket where you are going to upload the data. Now, the question is, where does the encryption happen? 
if the encryption is happening at the machine side at the local side if you are doing the encryption and then you are uploading encrypted object then that is client side encryption but if the encryption is happening at server side like you are uploading unencrypted object and aws is doing the encryption then that is called a server side encryption so this is client side if encryption happens here then it's a client side encryption and if the encryption happens here then it's a server side encryption okay as simple as that but in server side encryption there are multiple types okay so if you see here if i enable server side encryption here now i need to select which encryption i want okay here i need to select which encryption i want so uh, whether i want amazon s3 manage key okay whether i want this encryption or i want this encryption i can select that right so if i go ahead with this encryption this is your sse s3 server side encryption s3 uh, server side encryption by s3 so let me put here so here what happen is that your data will be when your data gets uploaded to s3 that will be unencrypted data so let's say you are uploading this object okay you are uploading this object this will be a unencrypted object okay this will be a unencrypted object right when this data get uploaded to aws s3 will maintain its own key so s3 will have its own key that will do the encryption okay s3 is the one that will maintain this key s3 is the one that will do the encryption okay so the key belongs to s3 that is why it is called as server side encryption s3 right key will be maintained by s3 only but let's say another encryption that we have here is aws key management service key kms so kms is a dedicated service that maintains your key kms is a dedicated service in aws that contains the key okay so if you go with this option if you go with kms option then same scenario played out like this again you will upload an encrypted data okay again you will upload an encrypted data but he this time key does not belong to s3 this time key doesn't belong to s3 this time key will be provided by another service called as kms so kms will is the one that will maintain the key okay kms will maintain the key and kms will do the encryption so data will be stored in s3 but key will be uh, key for encryption will be taken from kms right okay server is basically server side okay it's not actually a server it is referred as server side you can say aws as well because kms is nothing but a service just like your ec2 just like s3 it is just a service so there is no server here it's a server side which is happening at aws side okay it's not your typical server right now next thing okay so these are the two server side encryption but let me tell you even your kms gets divided into two types now kms i told you kms is the key management service kms is the service that maintains the record uh, maintains the key now this key could be of two types okay 
So in K miss, let me write here. In K miss, there are two types of key. Uh, either there will be AWS manage key, which are the default key that you get. You don't need. To, you cannot create this key. You cannot delete this key. These are the key which are created by AWS, and these are the default key. Or if you want, you can create your own key. Okay, they are called as customer manage key. They are called as customer manage key. So customer manage key is the one that is uh, that you will get uh, that you can create. Okay, so if you created your own key, then that will be called as customer manage key. Okay, so this key is created by you, but it will be stored at AWS uh, at on KMS. Okay, here you get some degree of control because the key is here created by you. Even though KMS is the one that will manage the key, KMS is the one that will do the encryption, but the key was created by you. Okay, so there are two types here. One type could be where key is managed by AWS. Okay, that could be one type. Another type could be where key is managed by key was created by customer, not managed, but created by customer. That is you. Okay, if the key is created by you, then you will get that a uh, little bit of control, right? Uh, now, here you can see if you go with server side encryption S3 and server side encryption KMS, where key is AWS managed, you can understand everything is handled by AWS. No, you, your input does not require. You don't need to manage the key. You don't need to create the key. You don't need to do the encryption. You don't need to do the decryption. Everything is handled by AWS. Okay, one second, guys. Yeah, I was saying what I was saying is that everything is managed by AWS. Okay, uh, if you go with these two options. But when you go with customer manage key, again, the key is managed by KMS. The encryption is done by KMS. Decryption is done by KMS. But you are the one who created the key. So you get little bit more control. But if you want the entire control, if you, uh, if you are very secure about if your organization is very secure about the data, then what you can do is that you can upload your, uh, you can do client side encryption. In client side encryption, you will encrypt the data at client side, then you will upload the data. And you will see there is nothing much to manage here. If I just need to enable this, let's say I go with S3, create the bucket. Or let's say I did not create a bucket with uh, encryption. No problem. You can do change that later as well. Okay, so this will be the default encryption. Okay, now if you upload the data, you don't need to worry about any doing encryption or decryption. Just upload the data, data will get automatically encrypted. You won't even know about it. Okay, so this data that is stored, it is stored in encrypted format. Okay, when you download this data again, AWS will decrypt the data automatically. You don't need to worry about how to decrypt the data. AWS will do it for you. You don't need to decrypt. In case of client side encryption, you will have to decrypt the data because you are the one who encrypted the data. So AWS don't know how to decrypt that data. Decrypting the data will be your responsibility in client side. In server side, even uh, that is also handled by AWS. I hope that is clear. Yeah. 
No, it is different, Mahesh. Although the underlying algorithm uh, is same, but different style. Uh, I guess then we are done with S3. One minute. Okay, there are some questions. Let me answer them. Question by Mohammad Ali. The unencrypted object will be interceptable, so it is not secure. Uh, yes, of course, it is not secure. Uh, API part is not there, Vignesh, in your course content. I will cover the API part uh, as an additional thing from my side, but it is not the part of your course content, and, and I will cover that in later stages. Question by Tanmay, in custom key, is the public key only? Hello, uh, guys, is my voice audible? Sorry, I suddenly got disconnected. Okay. So, Ritesh asked the question, key is per account or op bucket? Uh, that's not necessary. You can use the same key for multiple bucket as well, or you can create individual key for every bucket. Bucket versioning, we covered the bucket versioning in our last session, Mayank. Uh, go with S3, Shashank. S3 will be better. No, I answered your question, Tanmay. If you think, uh, if you feel like your question was not answered, can you please put that again? on disconnected. Can you uh, please type your question again? In custom key, is the public key only stored at... No, uh, yeah, I answered this. Both the... Uh, you can have both symmetric as well as asymmetric key. in uh, your uh, KMS. Oh yeah, static website is something which is remaining. Okay, yeah, there's one more uh, 
topic give me one minute now if you remember on the very first day of s3 i told you uh, s3 is a your data is stored regionally okay uh, in the form of bucket but your s3 is a global service now why global service let me give you a reason and you also uh, i also told you that your bucket name has to be globally unique and there is a reason for that let me explain so s3 allows you to host a static website okay s3 s3 allows you to host a static website so if you go to the property here you will see static website hosting okay here you will see static website hosting so this option allows you to host a static website in your sc you don't require a uh, server for that but remember we are talking about static website we are not talking about dynamic website static website are your website like blog that doesn't get uh, you know uh, that does not have you know user interactivity uh, okay it's just something which is readable like a blog so you can host such website on your s3 just like many people host their website on github you can do the similar stuff here so what we are going to do here let me enable this you enable the static website hosting then we need to define index document okay we need to define index document so index file is basically the main file or you can say the home page of your web application okay so uh, when someone visits your website this index file is displayed to them first right so here even though i am defining index.html you can define some other name the convention is to define index.html okay so i am following convention here but make sure when you upload the website code on s3 that code file name should be index.com uh, sorry index.html right finally that error document is optional and uh, let me save the change and you will see as soon as you enable the bucket uh, hosting s3 bucket hosting it will give you an url okay you will get an url here now let me upload a html file let me show you let me upload a html file here one second okay i am uploading a index.html file so this is a html file web page and i will grant it public permission oh let me upload this and for your static website to work you just need to make your bucket and object publicly available okay so let me remove block access block public access let me remove this uh and uh, in properties or one in permission let me make it we we did this earlier as well okay uh, in our last session i will make i will enable the acl and i will make my object public okay so you need to make your file which are which are you know your uh, website file you need to make them publicly available right and now the url that you got you can go to that url and you will see your website hosted okay so this is my web page of course it does not have the cs C, uh, css file so you need to upload the entire web uh, web development project then it will host it okay but make sure this is static website only static websites are hosted on s3 now you will see here let me take this url let me copy this url
So this is my website URL. So you guys tell me if you guys also create a S3 hosted static website. Can I say? Can we assume, or can we say that your website will also have? Uh, one second. Can we say your website is also going to have this much part as common? In your URL, you will have this much part as common. Amazon AWS dot com, right? So, and let's say you also hosted your website, you also created your bucket in Ohio region. So, can I say in your bucket, uh, in your website, this part will also be the common, and this part will also be the common. And obviously, obviously, this is HTTP protocol. So now tell me what is that one part of the bucket that is making the URL unique? Because we know that domain names are always unique. You cannot have two google.com bucket name, right? Now you understand why bucket name has to be globally unique. Right now, uh, uh, yeah. So if you have any question, please tell me. Uh, there is one more part. I would like to give you guys this as an assignment or kind of homework. Do read about access point. Okay, it's nothing. It's quite simple. Even if you just read this much description, you will understand what exactly it is. Uh, it's not something that uh, very complex. So take it as a homework. If you don't understand, let me know. I will explain. But you know, I would, I, I want to give you something as a, uh, you know, something as a kind of a self-study thing. So please do read about it. Okay, it's not that important. That's why you know I'm leaving it to you guys. Is that cool with everyone? Do read about it. If you don't understand, let me know. I will cover it. Can we write the policy to control the ACS ACL? No, you don't write the policy to control the ACS ACL Shri. You write the policy to con control access over your bucket or object that is called as bucket policy. And we will see that in IAF. Okay, we will see how to work with policy in IAF. Why, which encryption type do you think is preferable for more security? See, uh, client side encryption uh, is only. Uh, is suitable in the scenario when your organization want to do the encryption at their side if they don't want to leave it to AWS for security reason. Otherwise, you can go with KMS. KMS will be the better one. Because unlike S3, not every service have their own encryption type. So if you def if you keep the encryption standard default to a KMS for every service, then that will be better. Hello guys, is my voice not audible? Hello? Uh, yeah, Tanmay, about your question. KMS can store both asymmetric and symmetric key. Both of them works with KMS. No, no, KMS is a managed service. You don't manage KMS. You don't manage key. You just create the key and later on part is managed by KMS. Right, so let us jump to the next topic. It's 
on the basis of whether you have see there are two types of key public key and private key on the basis of whether you have both public key and private key or you have only private key or only public key on the basis of that symmetric and symmetric key is there uh, i don't have that login part sunil that is there for student i have uh, i have ppds i don't have the login part Just give me one second. Okay. So then, so now the next service that we need to study here is database module. Okay. Database module, right? I'm logging to my uh, AWS account, Sunil. That AWS account is different. It is not related to IntelliPath or in any way. This is my personal account. I'm showing you demo from my personal account. Okay. If you want anything, you know, like uh, syllabus or any detail related to course, for that you'll have to connect with support team because I don't have visibility there. I just have the course. Uh, I just uh, have to. I have some topic that I need to cover. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, but I don't have access to that. You'll have to contact to the support team. Okay, they will. They will give you a course content and even your. Uh, what are the upcoming session will be of, uh, about after my training? They can. They can give you entire information because those guys are the one that maintain all of this schedule. And they are the one who actually have complete uh, control over this. Okay. Now let me show you here. So our next module is database module, right? Uh, in database module, we have many services. In fact, there is a dedicated uh, certification for database module. Okay, and that is called as AWS certified develop uh, AWS certified database specialty exam. Okay, so there is a dedicated certification on database module. So if you look at here in the service section, in database module you will see there are so many services. Okay, so you can see there is Document DB, Dynamo DB, Elastic Cache. Document DB is your MongoDB equivalent. So MongoDB is your open source NoSQL database. If you want MongoDB on AWS Cloud, you will go with Document DB. If you want NoSQL database on AWS Cloud, you will go with DynamoDB. This is very very important. We have this. This is something that we are going to study. If you want Redis or Memcache, okay. If you want in-memory database or Redis or Memcache, you will go with Elastic Cache. Okay. If you want Cassandra database, which is again an open source NoSQL database, if you want Cassandra on AWS Cloud, you will go with Key Spaces, right? If you want uh, Redis, then this is a dedicated for Redis. If you want Graph database, like Neo4j, if you want Graph database, you will go with Neptune. It's your Graph database. If you want Ledger database, then QLDB, Quantum Ledger database. Okay, if you want time stream, you will go with this. And if you want SQL database like MySQL, Oracle, then you will go with RDS. So solution architect, you just need to know mainly the RDS and DynamoDB. From this two database, you will get question. Okay, but we will also study Elastic Cache because uh, sometimes you do get question from there from that also. Okay, so these are your database servers. Right. Now let's study RDS first of all. So let me put here. Now, if you want SQL database on AWS Cloud, you will go with RDS. 
if you want SQL database on cloud, you will go with RDS. Just like if you want server on AWS cloud, you will go with EC2. If you want file system on AWS cloud, you will go with EFS. You want block storage on AWS cloud, you will go with EBS. You want object storage, you will go with S3. If you want SQL database, you will go with RDS. When I say SQL database, I mean MySQL, okay, Oracle, MariaDB, PostgreSQL, okay, and Microsoft SQL Server. All these five databases, which are the most popular database, these five are the most popular database when it comes to SQL database or relational database. All of this are supported in your RDS. You want MySQL on cloud, go with RDS. You want Oracle on cloud, go with RDS. Okay. So you can get all of them, right? Now let's go to the RDS and let me show you a few. So this is your RDS and what we are going to do here is we are going to create database. Okay. I know there are so many things on the screen. Ignore all of that. Let us create our database and let's see this. Now there are many steps in creating database and let me tell you database on cloud, how it works. See, once you create this database, there is no, no difference at all. Okay, once you create this database, you will get the same MySQL, you will get the same Oracle that you have been using since past 10, 15 years. There is no difference, right? The, uh, the MySQL that you get on cloud, the MySQL that you install in your laptop, there is no difference. The difference lies in how it was created. The difference lies in how it is working behind the scene. Okay, so we need to understand that. Otherwise, once you get the database, everything is same your same query will run there. No difference at all. So see, while creating the database, just one minute guys. Okay. So uh, when you create the database, there are these two types. Okay, there is a standard create and then there is an easy create. These are the two methods you have. Right? So we will go with standard create because easy create abstract away lots of, you know, option. So you don't get the actual detail. So we will go with standard create so that we can see all the option. Now, just like how you selected AMI in your EC2, we will select engine type here in RDS. So you can select MySQL, you can select MariaDB, PostgreSQL, Oracle or Microsoft SQL Server. Ignore Aurora. In Aurora we will see uh, after uh, RDS. Aurora is different. Amazon Aurora. It is a part of RDS but it is quite different. So MySQL, MariaDB, you can select any one of them. Let's say we, are, we will go with MySQL. So if I select MySQL, now I will get this database. Right? Don't you guys think it is just like selecting the AMI? How you selected Ubuntu, CentOS, Windows, and you got that machine. Here we are selecting database engine and we will get that. Do we need to download it? No. Do we need to install it? No. Do we need to configure it? No. We're, we don't need to do anything of, like that. Right? Just select the engine and you will get that database. Right? And once you select that, then here you will see the versions. Okay, you can select their version, but remember this one thing. See, MySQL 5.7.22 version is there, the oldest. Okay, AWS always try to make their, uh, keep their database up to date. So you will not see very older version. If you want older version, uh, even older version than this, you will have to go with some other option. Can anybody tell me, other than RDS, how do you think you can host uh, MySQL database on AWS cloud or any other database. 
Any gifts? Yes, you can go to the EC2 and you can install everything in EC2, right? But when, when you do that, it's your responsibility to download uh, a database, install the database, do the configuration, then manage that as well. But if you go with RDS, everything is managed for you. Right? Here, everything is managed for you. So let's say we go ahead with this version. Now here we have templates. Okay, so there is a production template, dev test, and 3 tier. Okay? Of course, we will create our database in 3 tier, but we will see the configuration of production because that will reveal all the all the concept. Now see, this is the most important part that is availability and durability. Now let's understand each and every one of them one by one. So single database instance. If you go with this option, let me show you what will happen. If you go with single database instance, Basically, in a region. Uh, so let's say this is your Mumbai region. Okay. In Mumbai region, you have multiple AZ. Let's say there is AZ1. AZ1. And then you have AZ2. These are the two AZs you have. So what happened here is when you go with single DB instance, you will get your RDS database in the single instance. You think in the single AZ. You will get your database in only single AZ. Now think about it. What if something goes wrong in this AZ? What if this AZ goes down? If this AZ goes down, your entire database will go down. Do you have backup? Or yeah, you might have backup, but there will be a downtime. Okay, so this is not highly available if you are going with single DB instance. But if you go with multi AZ DB instance, if you go with this option, let me show you what happens. When, when you go with this option, you will get your database in one in one AZ. Okay, you will get your database in one AZ. This will be your primary database. This will be your primary database. Right? Now, along with this primary database, you will get a standby database. You will get a standby database as well. So this will be your standby database. Now, what is the benefit of having this standby database? The simple benefit of having this standby database is that the standby database will be there in case of failure. Okay. So let's say you have some failure in your AZ. You have some failure in this AZ one. Right. And let's say your customer, let's say some uh, using the database URL, customer are referring to this primary database and the whole AZ goes down. Then in one minute or generally the time period is uh, 60 to 120 seconds. From my project experience, I will tell you, it is always in between 80 to 100 seconds. But generally it is 60 to 120 in most of the cases. But whatever the, whenever I have worked with it or whenever we face some issue, it was always in 80 to 100 seconds. So now what will happen? The incoming request will be moved from your primary database to standby database okay when the failure happens here your request will move from here to 
स्टैंड बाय डेटा बेस राइट एंड दिस इज योर प्राइमरी डेटा बेस दिस इज योर सेकेंडरी डेटा बेस एंड बोथ ऑफ दिस डेटा बेस आर नाउ वेन यू आर यू नो यू आर रिडायरेक्टेड टू स्टैंड बाय डेटा बेस obviously stand by database needs to be up to date with your primary okay it needs to be up to date with your primary so when it is up to date with your primary only then it can serve when primary goes down so there will be always a replication that will happen all the time between your primary database and your secondary database or stand by database and this will be a sync replication this will be a sync replication between your primary database to your secondary uh, standby database right it will be a sync replication and this will make sure your standby database is up to date with your primary database okay and one more thing i want you to know here this is and by the way whatever i am covering right now again it is very in depth for your certification this is in this depth it is not required but let's say if you go for a product based organization they can ask you question on this because i have personally faced this question many times right so be prepared for that okay and having extra knowledge uh, never hurt so i hope nobody minds and this will be active and this will be passive so they will have a they will have a active passive scenario when one database goes down other one will get active okay when this goes down this will be get active everybody understood this no there is no two way sync everybody understood this of course latency will be there there will be slight latency that will be there but then that uh, primary database will become active now i have a question for you guys i have few question if you understood then i will ask you guys question okay we were saying yes all right the very first question i want to ask you is do you think it is highly available do you think using this feature of multi ag database instance this makes your database highly available do you think this yes or no it answer is correct it it will it is highly available okay it makes your database highly available now my next question okay do you think it is called tolerant these are all the question that i'm uh, asking you that i personally got and i have asked this question before taking interview of other people okay many people are saying yes many people are saying no okay i have a question to all the people who said no why no why do you think it is not fault tolerant No, no, no. That's incorrect term. That's not how it works. We have standby, so it shouldn't be fault tolerant. Wait a minute. I don't think that many people know what is fault tolerant. See, let me give you scenario.
let's say from tomorrow i'm not able to conduct your classes okay everyone please pay attention here let's say from tomorrow i'm not able to conduct your classes now intellipet team will arrange a new trainer for you okay will your training uh, is your training going to stop no your training will happen okay they will complete your aws training if not me then by other trainer so that makes intellipet training fault tolerant okay contrary to that i have my own business okay i have my own institute where i conduct batches okay where i i also provide aws training personally in my personal training where i provide uh, where i teach aws there is only one trainer that is me okay do you think my training is fault tolerant no because i am the only trainer there if something goes wrong with me then there is no one to conduct their training okay but in intellipet they have bunch of trainers if pratik is not there then there will be other trainer so that makes intellipet intellipet fault tolerant everybody understood the meaning of fault tolerant understanding of fault tolerance is clear because the kind of answer that i got it it, uh, it seems like many people don't know what is fault tolerant and that's okay okay now let me tell you one more thing now you guys tell me who said no do you think this is fault tolerant yes or no okay sunil raj raja gopalan mohammad ali they are still saying no i would like to hear your reason and this is very important any reason specific reason guys okay you guys write your reason till then all right let me tell you why it is it is not fault tolerant their answer is correct but the reason why it is not fault tolerant no auto scaling is not not the reason there is no auto scaling here auto scaling is there but it's different it is not fault tolerant let me tell you guys okay why see if we, now i'm going very strict okay i'm going very strict with the definition if you uh, look at the definition of fault tolerant fault tolerant basically means your if one database fails you are immediately you know Uh, redirected to another database without any downtime do you remember earlier i told you there will be a downtime of 60 to 120 second 1 to 2, 2 minutes of downtime will be there so we have downtime here so do you think it is fault tolerant no ssc example let's understand the ssc example intellipet will arrange another trainer for you if i am not there to conduct your training okay so intellipet will arrange another trainer but let's say they ask you wait for a while uh, since all of this happened suddenly intellipet uh, took one or uh, two they took two weeks so for the next two weeks your class did not happen and then the new trainer came in so we can say there was a downtime in your training and since the downtime was there is it fault tolerant no it is not if the intellipet if i if i'm not conducting your training from tomorrow and tomorrow itself the new trainer is there then that is highly uh, that is fault tolerant intellipet is fault tolerant there everybody understood the ssc example this is the real reason yes raja gopal correct okay now uh, this is something that i have faced for one of the uh, big product based company okay so when you go with aws try to understand things in depth second thing uh, third question do you think this will improve performance
it will not increase the performance okay why because i told you it is active passive it's not like that both of them are active at the same time and both of them are contributing okay only when one fails another one will run so do you think it will improve the performance no okay it will not increase the performance it uh, if both of them are active at the same time and they are serving the customer then we can say the uh, the load will be handled by both the server so it will be highly performant but not here okay they are not highly performant right so these are the few things we i can go even in, in even in more depth but uh, that will be way too much and you will anyway understand that as you read more and more uh, white papers if you read uh, you know faqs if you work on project then you will understand otherwise we can go on and on right now the next thing so uh yeah this is your multi ad db instance right then we have and please if you want please do read read about it even more it's very uh, you know in depth topic now we have this new feature of multi ad db cluster what is this feature let me tell you see this feature basically means let's say you have one more ad okay you have one more ad now you will have a primary database okay so you will get a standby database in this ad and you will get one more standby database in another ad so here you get two standby database okay here you will uh, get two standby database okay so this will be a primary db and this two will be standby database what else the benefit you get the benefit that you get here is both of them are readable they are the readable database okay when i say readable basically i means they can accept the read queries primary database will accept read and write both the queries but this two uh, database they will not accept write queries but they will ex, uh, uh, accept at least the read queries Hello guys. Uh, I'm not sure what is ha happening. How long I was uh, gone? Because here I was uh, able to see everything. Two minutes. Okay. Let uh, let me repeat. See, I told you this, both of these standby database will be readable. Okay. So primary database will will uh, support both read and write queries, while your standby database will support only the read queries. Okay, both the standby database will support only read queries. Now, let's say you are getting a lot of traffic, lot of uh, read and write requests. So your write request can be handled by primary database, while the read request can be handled by both of these database. Don't you think, along with availability, it will also improve the performance? right it will improve the performance because this time they the standby database are also doing some job they are also serving the customer
okay yes of course there will be a little latency will be there because they are across the ac ac yes i think that is also possible so with cluster feature you get more high availability and you get more uh, better performance and this cluster feature was released just few months ago and it is still uh, yet uh, it is still uh, you know in yet to get in mature phase we have we have still yet to use this feature in our uh, project it was just uh, released very very recently okay now last 8 minutes are remaining i am going to answer some question from the q and a so if you have any question please let me know we have different storage available s3 ebs efs what is the deciding factor uh balram i already repeated this multiple times see if you have a object based storage where you want to store any kind of data whether it's csv json video audio you will store that or you want to store unlimited amount of data you will go with s3 okay if you want to store the data when the data is applied uh, when the uh, you want to store the data with ec2 then you will go with ebs okay you will go with ebs and uh, efs you will use when you want to store uh, when you want to share that data with multiple ec2 at the same time at that time you will go with efs balra how will recovery work once ad1 db is restored see uh, when your primary database goes down your user will be redirected to standby database okay your users will be redirected to standby database but standby database will, will just be there it will not accept any traffic it will not accept any right queries okay it will showcase all the uh, you know data but not the right data right so uh, okay so that will be done by primary database so when your primary database goes uh, live again it it have nothing to take from a uh, st standby database tanmay i hope tanmay that is clear many people had that question question by amruta once active database comes back will the data that was inserted into uh, amruta i hope you also understood i just repeated that question by mayank gupta when primary server is up again then how it will get there oh mayank i hope you also got it same question is there indranil asks suppose the primary db is down customer are using standby database to save the data uh, indranil i hope you are also got it back to back same four question what about the fault torrent in last time again here also you don't have fault torrent here also there will be a downtime and see many people use fault torrent very loosely but when you are suggesting solution to your client you need to be very strict around this definition because if your client is very strict around this definition you should not have any miscommunication okay let's say there is a downtime of 10 seconds that's not really a downtime okay that you can say okay it's fault tolerant but here there can be a downtime of 1 to 2 minute that's why we are saying it's not fault tolerant but again sometimes that depends from business to business some business are okay with that downtime so they might even call it fault tolerant so many people in the industry use it in a very loose term they use this fault tolerant very loosely question by amruta sync in what standby happens from primary yes it happens from primary only because primary is the one that will contain all the data can there be a scenario where standby server gave wrong data in multi cluster new no 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 there is no such scenario man why it will give the wrong data any other question guys please put question in q and a SLA yes it depends on SLA of the client project but you guys keep yourself strict in this uh, in this form okay uh, this is something that i got uh, got the understanding from uh, rds white paper
question by Balram. Uh, Grace, can you please put the question in Q&A? Okay, in chat, it is very difficult to keep the track. Question by Balram. If standby database won't accept right queries, then it can cause an outage for the application that uses S3, right? See, yeah, that will be there will be certain downtime, but at least you can get your data back. The data that you have already uh, written down, you can query that data again. Balram. Question by Raja Gopalan, which means when when mean time between failure is low, it is more fault tolerant. It is scale and not a binary decision. Uh, yes, correct. It's not exactly the binary binary decision. Only if you go strictly with the definition at that time only. But you guys keep precautions from your side because suggesting solution to the client is is not a joke. Okay, so you have to be strict from your own side. That will be handled by your AWS Shri. That will be automatically handled by AWS. You don't uh, do that. Dilesh, think about it. If you lost the data, then how can you get it? You lost the data, you lost the data. You cannot get it again. Until or unless you have taken its backup, you know, locally. You lost the data. That is the risk we have with one zone. Nilesh. All right then folks, that's it for today. Uh, one more question. When write operation is happened in primary, but it took 60 seconds to reach that data to standby. No, no, that doesn't take 60 seconds. See, Mayang, uh, data replication doesn't take 60 seconds. You redirecting the user from primary to secondary or standby. That takes 60 seconds for your standby database to become active from passive. That takes 60 seconds, not the replication. Replication happens very quickly. Uh, all right, then, folks, that's it for today's session. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. I hope you're uh, understanding everything, right? I hope you are still finding the training useful and you're learning a lot. Please do give the feedback, okay? Otherwise, this guys might remove me. Because the not giving feedback is also considered as negative feedback. That's why. All right then, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everyone.